Psalms 113 through 118 are called the Egyptian Hallel, and they were used and are used with the Jewish Passover festival. So it's important before we read these psalms that we take a look at the background of the Passover meal. Passover meal stands alone as the longest continuously held religious ceremony, going on over 3,400 years uh, today, and it has relatively remained unchanged over all of those years. It was held on the night of the 10th plague when the Israelites were in Egypt, and this was the night of the death of the firstborn. You'll recall that the plagues were essentially a battle of the gods, the god Yahweh versus the gods of Egypt. And Pharaoh himself was a god king, but the tenth plague demonstrated that even Pharaoh, as the god king, could not prevent the death of his own son. The uh, meal, of course, commemorates the seminal event in Jewish history, that is the exodus from Israel. This was the birthday of the nation. It is the Independence Day, if you will, for the Jewish people. And so like we celebrate Independence Day in the United States, uh, this uh, was that and so much more. Because for us as Christians, this uh, Passover experience, the Exodus from Egypt, uh, is a symbolic type of the victory that we experience in Christ through his death and resurrection, and all of that is symbolized and wrapped up in this meal. This meal was also observed by Jesus and his disciples in what we call the Last Supper. So one of the interesting things about these psalms is we can place them in the life of Jesus very confidently on that night before he was crucified. We can be confident that he and his disciples prayed these prayers together. And if you'll pray these prayers with that in mind, I promise you it will yield some amazing insights into the mind of Christ uh, in the evening before his crucifixion. Uh, The word Seder means order, and the order for the Passover meal has remained relatively unchanged, as I said, over the years. It involves eating certain symbolic foods. Carpus, these are the Hebrew words. Carpus means green vegetable, and that's because the Passover meal was held in the springtime when the land began to green up again. Maror, bitter herbs, reminded them of the bitterness of slavery. And this is a very strong horseradish that will bring tears to your eyes. Bacharoset is a sweet fruit mixture that resembles mortar and reminds them of freedom and the sweetness of freedom. Of course, the primary meat of the meal was the lamb, uh, and this represented sacrifice because the lamb was slain and its blood was placed over the doorposts uh, for the Passover. The matzah is the unleavened bread, simply uh, flour, water, baked in the sun, baked quickly, not given a chance for it to rise to represent the fact that they were on the move. They were leaving Egypt and quickly. Salt water, Uh, to represent the tears, and boiled egg to represent long life. Now, the egg was not introduced until later. I don't have any evidence that this was done during the days of Christ. Symbolic actions involved with this meal included the cleaning the house of yeast. So in the days preceding the Passover meal, the house was swept clean because yeast uh, represented impurity. Also, uh, the wearing of sandals, because this was a meal that was meant to remind them uh, that they were leaving Egypt. And so if you're going to leave town, you've got to have your sandals on. They also ate reclining, uh, because they are a free people. And so it meant to indicate that now they were at rest. They were no longer slaves. There are four cups of wine that are consumed during the meal at various points. And we'll highlight that in a bit. And then the afikoman is one of the matzah, one of the pieces of bread, that uh, before the meal is is broken, and then half of it is wrapped in a cloth and then hidden. And then later the children go and find it. So the afikamen means that which comes after. So you might think of it as a dessert after the meal. And of course this meal was accompanied by songs. In particular, we know that these six psalms of the Passover, the Egyptian Hallel, were incorporated in the meal. Uh, there's a list of all the actions, and as you can see, the Passover meal is, is truly a Seder. There is order to it, 
and uh, this uh, sets it apart from a lot of the worship that we experience in modern worship, which we we tend to be somewhat um, impromptu, extemporaneous in how we do things. Uh, but this is a ritual that has remained unchanged for some time. The Passover Seder could be uh, seen as structured around these four cups. So there's the cup of sanctification. Sanctification means to set apart. And so the cup of sanctification says this meal is different than all others. Uh, they washed their hands, of course, because uh, silverware was not used. They ate with their hands. So there's a hygienic purpose, but also a ritual purpose to say this is a special meal. So we want to be pure before we consume it. The green vegetables dipped in salt water, representing the tears. The four questions, this would have been asked by a child in the room uh, because this meal was so different. And these were the four things about the meal that were different than usual. And so a child would ask these questions and adults would answer, making this a teachable moment. And of course, the story of the Passover was recounted. The second cup was the cup of plagues. And this is where the participants remembered the suffering of their uh, neighbors in Egypt, the, the Egyptians. And each of the plagues is recited and contemplated. And uh, there is a moment to feel sadness uh, for the suffering of others as well. So while they celebrate freedom, they understand that that came at a cost. Uh, this is the moment where the the Passover meal is actually eaten, and then after the meal, the afikoman, or the dessert, is consumed along with it. And this is the bread with which Jesus identified himself in the Last Supper. Isn't it significant? It's the bread that was taken away, that was wrapped in a cloth, and hidden, and then revealed, and then consumed, much as Jesus' body was taken away, wrapped in a cloth, hidden in a tomb, and then resurrected. It is this bread that Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body, the resurrected body of Jesus. The third cup is the cup of salvation. Also after the supper, this is the cup with which Jesus identified himself. This is my blood. The blood of Jesus is the means of our salvation. And also after this, they welcomed Elijah to the meal. They would always set an empty seat for Elijah because the prophecy was that before the Messiah comes, Elijah would come to prepare the way. Uh, of course, Jesus tells us that John the Baptist was that Elijah to come, so there's no longer a need for this. Elijah has already come, so I doubt at that uh, Last Supper that Jesus had a place set for Elijah because John the Baptist had already come. And finally, the cup of praise. To wrap up the meal, they consumed a fourth cup, sang a psalm, and drank the cup and declared together, next year in Jerusalem.